Well, if we go back, so I actually got discharged from the Air Force in 1997 for, for being gay. So I was kicked out and I could have gone to prison then because it wasn't legalised until the 12th of January 2000. So up until 1997, um, I was living a complete lie and having to hide who I was. I grew up knowing that I was gay, but I didn't want to be gay. I also wanted to get married and I wanted to have children. The only role models that we had, or the only people that were visible, were your Larry Graysons, your Julian Clary's, um, very camp, very flamboyant, but that was the only sort of role model. And I felt there was no normal gays out there. So I entered the competition in 2000, 2001 for Mr. Gay UK. And I won that, and the reason why I went for it was to try and normalise who we are and the fact that it wasn't just a mincing queen going down the street or some very one, very camp and flamboyant or a muscle Mary as it was. It was the fact that, you know, I'd done normal jobs, um, I'd been in the Air Force, I'd been in the fire service, I'd stacked shells in Asda. Um, I was normal, but I was gay. And for me, I think that was one of the reasons why I wanted to sort of try and get that on the radar to sort of normalise who we are. You know, and then in 1999 we had Russell T Davis wrote Queer as Folk and I think, you know, some people found it, it, it sort of, you know, with the village, it opened the village up to a lot of other people, but I actually think it was really important that, to have that visibility. And, and if we look at where we are as gay men from Queer as Folk and Russell T Davis's programme, we've moved on leaps and strides in, 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 that, in, in that time and I think that we still need to sort of fight for that same equality for our trans siblings, our non-binary siblings, and our gender fluid siblings to make sure that, that we give them better space and also to let them be themselves.